very much. We can hear that witness a couple times. <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> um, gosh, that scripture reading seems so harsh, doesn't it? It's got uh, carry the cross. It's got hate your mother and father, your, your wife, your brother, your sister. Give up all your possessions. Uh, that's pretty hard stuff. Jesus uses the negative, not, cannot, no one, um, 11 times in these eight verses. I, I mean, there's a lot of negative sounding stuff here. I want to start with, uh, you know, the parable he tells is, is, you know, somewhat familiar to us. No one uh, who's renovating a house on King Avenue starts their project and guts the kitchen and then runs out of money and is stuck without a refrigerator and without a stove and, and all of that. Um, people will look at that empty kitchen and say, what a fool. What a fool that they didn't figure out the cost before they started. You figure out the cost. I want to start with the idea of cost. Cost is the price we pay for something we want. It's what we give up to attain or accomplish or acquire or maintain what we want, what we desire. You know, and uh, usually, you know, we talk about cost in, 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 in getting something better, in getting something better. Uh, and, and, and so we say, what was the cost of your house? Because you get a better house. Even if we're downsizing to a tiny house, we can say, what was the cost? Because we want something better. If we get a tiny house, maybe then we have money for entertainment and traveling and so on. So that, that's our goal. And often when we talk about cost, it does imply a sacrifice. You know, we don't too often talk about what was the cost of that milk because that's just kind of surplus money that we don't, that we don't really think about. But when, when we're, we're talking about cost, it, it, it is something that maybe we have to go without something else to get what we want that's better. Now, there are lots of examples of, um, of cost in our lives. And, you know, we initially think of money. Uh, what did the house cost? What, what did the car cost? What did that suit cost? What did that ring cost? You know, what, it, and with the implication of what did you give up to get that? But there are other things that entail cost. And often it revolves around money and relationships. Um, what did it cost you to become a lawyer? What did your schooling cost? But uh, did you go without sleep? Did you, did you sacrifice friends in order to attain that goal? What did it cost you to become a doctor? You know, yes, there was money, but there was also long hours of study, long hours at the hospital, uh, long hours without your partner, maybe not seeing children. You know, there's an, a, there's an emotional and relational cost to much in our life. Um, in AA, they say, you know, put nothing before sobriety. So there's anything that becomes between us and sobriety. That's the cost we pay for sobriety. You know, and, and that what we put before sobriety could be, you know, friendship. It could be relatives. It could be money might be, you know, a lifestyle, certainly, for sure. Yeah. What's the cost of being on that team? Yeah. Again, we get into long hours of practice, um, going without things. Well, I can't go out on Friday night. I can't go out on Saturday night. I've got to lift weights. I've got to run. I've got to train. You know, Pay a price. There's a cost. I go through all of those examples because when Jesus talks about giving up and cost and carrying cross and, um, and, and hating uh, you know, family, which, which many people think means just love less or turn away from, uh, 
when he talks about that, in a way, he isn't saying anything that we don't experience in our life. Most of us have paid a cost. We've paid a cost you know, for a relationship. Um, when we get married, we kind of turn from our family of birth, and that relationship changes. When we, when we have a child, you know, we turn away from kind of the freedom that we've had because the child now becomes our responsibility. Jesus isn't saying anything that we haven't experienced at some point, maybe many times, in our own lives. There's nothing unique here. And he isn't saying anything that other religions don't say. I mean, Buddhism talks about emptying so we can be filled. I mean, emptying is just another way of saying give up possessions, carry your cross, turn aside from. You know, commitment is like that. When we are all in, there's a cost to being all in with the team, with the marriage, with the family, with the job, with the schooling, with sobriety. There's a cost to being all in. I don't think Jesus is saying, you know, you carry your cross and you give up your possessions and then you turn aside from your hand. I think he's saying the same thing. He's just approaching it in different ways. But to be all in, there are certain things in order to acquire something that we might have to give up. We can't do it all. It's interesting when Jesus gives this passage, he, how he phrases it is, no one can follow me unless they hate their mother, father, brother, sister. No one can be my disciple if they do not carry the cross. No one can follow me unless they give up their possessions. He doesn't say we have to do that. He doesn't say you must carry a cross. He doesn't say you must uh, turn aside from your family. He doesn't say you must give up your possessions. It's a choice here. It's a choice. Um, he isn't going to force us to do anything. If you want to follow me, you must give up certain things. In the um, 1800s and early 1900s, polar exploration was a big deal. The, um, these polar expeditions that went to the North Pole and the South Pole were, um, they were looking philosophically, they were looking for purity. They were looking for Innocence. They were looking for the inaccessible. In a sense, that sounds like they were looking for God. They were looking for purity, and they were looking for the inaccessible. And some of the reading the journals of some of these trips is fascinating. One trip, the Franklin Expedition, to go to the North Pole. You think, what would you take? South Pole. What would you take? What would you take? to go to that inhospitable climate. Well, they took a full place setting of silver, china, and crystal for every sailor, every, every 150 people. They took full place settings, the silverware, the goblets, the china, the different plates. They took a full organ on their ship. They took ponies for their sleds rather than dogs because they thought ponies were better. And that meant they had to take all this hay. Yeah. Well, eventually the Franklin expedition was found frozen in. All of the sailors were dead because they didn't know 
what to give up to get to the inaccessible. When Bird and his trip made it, Bird could take along the Bowdoin College flag and post it at the polar cap because he had planned so well and he had given up all the unnecessary stuff that he could take one thing <coughs> that mattered, he went to both, that mattered to him. When we hear this, take up your cross and give up your possessions, when we hear Christ say it, we think, why? What's the payoff? If I think about a cost for a house, I know what the payoff is. If I think about a cost to joining the team, if I think about a cost for a possession, I know what the payoff is. But it seems that when Jesus says this stuff, he's just saying, jump off a cliff. Jump into the ocean. It seems nuts. What Jesus is saying is, basically, we're traveling to discipleship. This giving up stuff is just the first step. We're traveling to discipleship. We are traveling to that purity. We're traveling to that inaccessible. We are traveling to union with God. And he says, if you want union with God, there are things you have to go without. Now, one person said to me this week, well, Jesus says, hate your mother and father and, and hate your brother and sister. And he said, I already hate them. <laughs> so am I in? <laughs> Have I done it? Have I made the first step? I said, well, maybe for you, the thing you have to give up is your hatred. Maybe for some of us, what we have to give up to reach union with Christ is our addiction to money, or is our addiction to grudges, our addiction to bitterness, our addiction to jealousy. Maybe it is addiction to career. Maybe these are the things we have to give up to get to that union with God. And that's what discipleship is, union with God. There are lots of things we give up that stand in the way. And what Jesus is talking about is transformation of our lives. If I give up anger, I'm transforming my life. If I give up hatred, I'm transforming my life. but I become a new person in union, one with Christ. Christ's life is really a series of dying to certain things and rising to other things. That's the second step. And it says, we say that every time we take communion. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. That's our belief, and that's when we follow Christ, that becomes the model for our life, dying to certain things that make us less and rising with Christ to become more and different. This actually is not a harsh passage. It's a very optimistic passage. We're wrestling with death in many ways. Die to those things that make us less than human, to rise to being fully human. That's our journey. And when we model Christ in that journey, we become new people who are transformed and fully alive. May it be so. Amen.